Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today we are here for another video and it is the the Friday night pen thoughts number eight and today is Lisboa 7 de maio de 2021 and so welcome sorry first of all for not having this video last week but I had a quite a busy work week last uh, last week uh, I'm working from home but there are sometimes the there is some more tasks to do so I did not have the time to do this video and I could have done it uh, if I did it uh, later but I didn't think it would be a good idea because I would be running to keep the the time to to record it to edit it to post it and it I know it wouldn't be interesting it would be just running so I decided well I don't have the time to do it I will not do it and this will happen more times but uh, I prefer to do this with time and not uh, really running one thing I may need to do sometime is to start recording this video one or two day, one or two days earlier but I don't have that time all the time so I didn't do it I'll try to do it um, maybe someday but now today it is the the end of the the work day of this Friday so I still need to edit it and do all that but I think I will have the time so let's not waste any more time and let's talk about these two little things not that little but these two pens which are the pens that will be used during this video as you know sometimes I write down some stuff and I do it with these pens and so these were my choices for today you have here one of them metal brushed metal even with a brushed section and this is the Aurora 98 I don't know how this finish is called let's call it brushed steel I need to investigate more about this with uh, Aurora blue cartridge inside and this is a fine nib that is engraved somewhere I can see no it's not a fine it's a medium nib sorry there M it is a little uh, not straight at all why isn't this focusing no I think you can see it so it is an interesting pen with that kind of hooded Aurora pen which is nice I think this pen may be a little bit too wet, so maybe some bleed through will happen, but we know this Muji paper is not the best, but it is good enough. So this is Muji paper, if you are wondering about that. It has been since the beginning of these videos. Uh, let me just show you how wet the pen is. It is not very wet, but I think it puts down some ink uh, it's hard to explain and the other pen that I'm going to use today is this one these are recent pens that I got sorry but when I receive them I'm more excited with them so I start just I ink them up and start writing with it this light is not good there's lots of shadows there this is a Santini Libra in the olive color it is a beautiful pen beautiful pen with this nib that is made by Santini themselves it's made in-house and it is a 18 karat gold nib yes it is a stiff nib it's not a flexi nib so 
the pen that I'm using is the Santini Libre, very pleasant to use, olive, with my favorite ink, which is the Mont Blanc Daniel Defoe. Yes, I love this ink. I'm complaining that I'm reaching the end of the bottle, but I keep using that, so it will end very soon. Let me just show you something. Is that the ink bottle is now empty of this ink. I have a viewer that told me to go for the Safari, for the Lamy, and I don't remember the color, I think it is Savannah. Um, not Lamy, sorry, Diamine Savannah, or Diamine Savannah. And this is what is left that's inside this Visconti traveling inkwell. This is the rest of my uh, Daniel Defoe, so it's quite empty. It's inside here because it's easier to take all the ink that is left from the traveling inkwell than from the bottle, which is quite shallow. And because I'm using it for the mainly for the Sailor King of Pen, which is a, a piston filler, that, not a piston filler, it is a cartridge converter pen that has not a lot of ink capacity inside the cartridge. I use that so I can have a very good feel from this traveling inkwell. That's an advantage for this. And this is a piston filler, so it's quite easy to use with this thing. So, these are two of the pens that I received recently. Now, let's take a look at the, the, the next point on our agenda, <laughs> let's call it this way. I have the videos. previous videos. So, what did I do in since, since the last uh, Friday Night Pen Thought, so the seventh episode? What did I do? I made four reviews and it was from the Lamy Safari, the edition for 2021, and this is the um, the Lamy Safari original Savannah Green. This was one of the reviews I published. I also published the Caveco Perkeo Light Spring that was already recorded for a long time, but I didn't publish it yet. And I think this one, this was one of the the reviews, the videos that you chose here on this video to to publish. Another pen that I reviewed, which is a very nice one, it is the Senator President. A nice, really nice pen. And the last of the four was yesterday and was this beautiful pen that you already know, the Leonardo, let's shorten the name, the Leonardo Pura Flaming orange. So, it is a very good pen. As usual, I'll try to leave links below for where you can find these pens if they are available and for the reviews I made. So, please check the description of the video on these Friday Night Pen Thoughts. Actually, in all my videos because I usually try to put uh, interesting information there because I think sometimes it's useful to have the, all the information Therefore, the people want to check them. Another video that I posted was the pens for the month. So, from the month, sorry. So, the pens that I received during the month of April. And then, I had four unboxings of four pens that arrived since last, the other Friday, the 23rd of April until today uh, and I had four pens arriving and I made their unboxings and those pens were the Hongdian 960 which is 
kind of an ice pen. Also, the Jinhao Centennial, Ch Centennial Checkerboard Blue, which is also an ice pen. Uh, I already polished it a little bit. It came a little bit unfinished, so I polished it. It's better, but I have I will polish it a little better. It is quite good, uh, despite that, and having this very large black square that I don't enjoy that much. And this one, the Hong Yen, is also a very good pen. However, the the plating, the gold uh, colored plating, is not very well done. In some places, it is out of the limits where it should be. So these two Chinese pens and I got two Italian pens. The other two Italian pens are the Aurora 98 that I'm using today and also the Santini Libra that I also received, that I'm also using today. Sorry. Sometimes it's hard to speak. So let's check which videos will be the next. So, one item was previous videos, now next videos. And the next videos will be about, let me take this out of the way, will be about the Pilot MR. I wanted to make um, maybe some longer video for tomorrow, but I don't think I'll have the time, so I think I will publish this one that is already recorded. It is the Pilot MR, which is basically a Pilot Metropolitan, the same pen, but it actually takes the international cartridges. So, um, it is kind of an European release, because here the international cartridges may be easier to find than the Pilot cartridges, so it is an interesting uh, pen, but I don't really love it. I can say it right now, but you can see my opinion about it on the next review. And I will also review soon the Lamy Safari original, and this is the Terra Red version, which, which is the matching pen for the special edition of 2021, matching pen for the, the Safari. Oops, the older, the Savannah Green. Still in this uh, topic of next videos, I have the first thing I want you to really comment uh, below on the comment section is the choice for one of the videos that I will publish next week. And I have two options. Uh, they are already recorded, so I have both. You just choose which one will come next week. So, it is your choice. And it is a versus video. These are the, the pens that... Uh, those videos where I show you two pens one against the other, so you can have them compared. And I have two pens here, or three pens uh, two by two. So, one the, of the options is the Montblanc Meisterstuck 149 versus the Senator President. So, one of the videos... Where is my Montblanc? will be this pen against this one or there is another choice of the Montblanc 149 versus the Sailor King of Pen which is also in a way quite comparable although one is a cartridge filler and the other one is a piston filler but I think these two videos make sense to compare these pens, so please let me know which you want to see. I'm trying to record some more uh, versus videos because I really think there are some potential for more comparisons and I have 
some pens, I have, I'm lucky enough for, to have some variety of pens that allow for some almost direct comparisons and this is a very nice thing to do, at least for me. I, I usually, when I buy a pen, I try to find videos about the specific pen that I want. And that's the most useful thing. But when I find a comparison between the pen that I want with the pen that I may have in my collection, sometimes that's useful. It may also be useful if you are just thinking which one of two options you want to get. So that's also an option if you are just undecided if you want to have a Sailor King of Pen or a Moonblown 149, maybe that's useful too. We are speaking about the Moonblanc 149 and this brings me to one unfortunate news, which is about the Moonblanc 149 broke. So as I think you know, I got my, where is it, my Moonblown 149 quite inexpensively. It was a used pen, it has some flaws, so it was r more on the inexpensive side. It's not inexpensive, it was almost as expensive as the Santini Libra, but for a Moonblown 149 it was not expensive. I've been using it the last time after I made these versus videos, I was cleaning the pen and the piston, not all the piston mechanism, but the little rubber or plastic gasket that is there that makes the vacuum, uh, went down and stayed there. I didn't force anything, I didn't do anything wrong, I was just cleaning the pen regularly and it got stuck down there. So now I'm thinking what should I do? I could send this pen for repair somewhere, maybe with Montblanc, but I'm not the original owner of these, I don't have any paperwork, so it would get highly expensive to do that. I could try to find someone that knows how to deal with Montblanc 49s, but in Portugal you don't have many people making repairs on pens, that is really a problem, and to ship it somewhere and you have to have someone that's trustworthy and it has, and that person has to live in the, the uh, European Union, otherwise I will be taxed by costumes when the pen arrives back. And so I'm thinking if I want, I really want to spend a lot of money fixing the pen, because even if I fix the pen, what I will have after is this, which is a, I cannot show it clearly, but it is an architect nib, which is not my favorite thing. So even if I do repair the pen, then I will need to exchange the nib or grind the nib or something like that. And I can't really do the restoration for myself because I would need tools and I think this may be too stiff. So I think that maybe a good option is to sell this pen as it is. It has a nice gold nib with an architect grind, which is quite interesting. And if I could uh, recover a part, uh, substantial part of the money I spent with this, because I think it still w is worth it. Maybe someone wants the pen for spare parts or just to fix it, but Actually, for me, to have to spend money on the nib, to have a nib that I like, like a fine, instead of an architect, and now to fix the, the plunger, it would be very, very expensive. So I don't think it makes that sense. And that is one of the reasons why I usually prefer cartridge pens. I know that, for example, this week I got this pen that I bought, a Santini Libra that is a piston filler. I know it's not my favorite filling system, but there sometimes there are pens that are really amazing, they are really attractive, I really want them in my collection, and if they are piston fillers, what can I do? That's, that's life, and I will accept them as piston fillers. So I have piston fillers in my collection, like 
the Mont Blanc, like this senator and sometimes many more pens and the Leonardo, just picking from the pens that I already showed you today. So I have uh, piston filler pens, but actually my most favorite filling system is the cartridge and because usually there is no major issues with the filling system breaking. That's why I like them. And in that sense I would like to ask you another question for a future video that I'm not doing this week because I started researching a little bit and it will take a lot of research because there are many brands, many variations. I would like to ask you if you find interesting, where are the pens? If you find interesting a video, you know those pen tips videos that I make, a video with which oops, I'm which cartridge fits which pen? Do you think this is an interesting topic? This is not um, usable for converters because sometimes there are converters that do not fit other pens because the, how they end on the part that goes into the pen and sometimes because in cartridges they are made of softer plastic and there, there is some give and sometimes you can adapt a cartridge to another pen but you can do that with the converter because it's more rigid. So that sometimes happens. And there are some pens, maybe, for example, there are some older pens that have filling systems that no longer exist, that have cartridge systems that no longer exist. And sometimes there are some modern cartridges from completely different brands that will fit. And I'm thinking about doing that. I remember, for example, I have a Diplomat. I don't have it here because if I had it, I would show it to you. I was not planning about talking about it specifically, but I have a Diplomat uh, Retro Pop 505. I, th I think that's the name, uh, which does not, which had a, which had a specific feelings. Uh, cartridge size that is no longer available. So if you get one of those pens, how can you use it? Easy, they will take cross cartridges, cartridges from the brand Cross. So I think this may be an interesting thing to talk about because sometimes a guide on these would be helpful. I know that the video is not the best kind of guidance. Uh, a written document is easier, but I think I, maybe I'll do a video. Please tell me what you think. Do you think that is an interesting thing to do or not at all? Please let me know. The next topic I want to talk about, I think this video will get a little bit longer because I thought of a lot of things to talk about, which is the uncommon pen of the day, which is something that I've been doing for some time now, because I really think it is a very interesting exercise to do. And about this uncommon pen of today, I have this thing. And why it, is it uncommon? I would say it is uncommon because it is made by, you can have one of those, but it is made by hand and it's not from a major brand. And this is the Pen Teo Samurai Ironwood. So, with a medium steel nib. This pen, it is um, skipping a little bit because it's getting out of ink, not because the pen is not good. I'm having this trouble with many inks in many pens uh, recently. You know, I even put all these down because it's really empty but I wanted just to show it be before I clean it and to leave it to rest for a little for some days 
before I ink it again because this is a pen that I really love and I, it is uncommon because as I told you it is a pen that's not from a major manufacturer it is from made in the Czech Republic um, by Theo that has this brand pen Theo and he makes pens out of ebonite, some plastics, uh, hard rubber and he makes the, the um, I think I said ebonite and hard rubber which are the same thing and also wood and then he applies some in some of the pens he applies some um, Japanese techniques this pen is made of iron wood which, which is quite a um, heavy wood and then it is lacquered with urushi and it makes the pen an amazing thing even the sound of it because of the urushi you use this pen and you don't feel it is made of wood it looks like it's made of something else it's really made of itself that's the best way i can describe it this pen is a um, uh, has the ebonite section it has a steel nib which has no logo it is a yovo nib which is it is very very smooth so it's very good but unfortunately it has no logo but if you get one of his pens with a gold nib it will have the brand logo engraved on the nib which is a nice thing so the pens are handmade you can discuss with him several steps of the of the construction of the pen and this is very unique because he sent me this pen for free I made the review but I really like this pen this pen is um, becoming one of my favorite pens I love to see the wood grain on the pen I love the feel of the Urushi. this pen is so well made it is so perfect it's very nice and this one has a is a cartridge uh, pen he has some pen made of ebonite that can be eye dropper. This one can't because it's made of wood. But he's now working on a very interesting thing, which is kind of retro, but I have to say that I love it. I, as far as you know, as no, as far as we are, I think you already know that I love the Parker Dual Fold and even the vintage Parker. Uh, senior to fold and those pens were button fillers and if you ask me I prefer button fillers uh, more than this is not <laughs> more than piston fillers and why one of the reasons is this one first we can you can fill the the button filler with just one hand and the piston is not that easy also the piston has some moving parts that may break and if you don't have the tools or the knowledge you may be you it may be very difficult to open it and to restore it. Usually, a uh, button filler, you just need to replace a sac. Okay, the sac is more fragile than all these, but if the sac fails, you just change the rubber sac and it's done. It rarely the button will fail or rarely the, um, the little bar inside that compresses the sac will fail. So the problem, the potential problem, is only the sec. Uh, and it's very easy to restore. You just need the sec and some shellac and it's done. So, this all to say that he is now making some of his pens with button fillers. I'm not sure if he's, if he's selling them already, but he is working on that and I think that is amazing and if I don't forget I will put a link below for his website so check it check the website and I think you may be surprised with some of the very nice stuff that he does so this was my uncommon pen of the day the Penteo Samurai Ironwood and now let's go for just a little detour and I have a viewer which is called who is called Paul Herman sorry about my my English sometimes my grammatics is not very good so I mix stuff up sorry about that but his name is Paul Herman and he collects as far as I understood he's almost as obsessive with Esterbrook pens as I am with Caveco Sport pens. So 
once I talked to him and I told him, yes, I have two Esther Brooks, I don't know anything about them. Yes, I still don't know anything about them. I have two that I bought more than 10 years ago. I never really cleaned, I never really restored it. I never, them, I never did anything with them. So I have them, I don't know nothing about them, but I have. And I decided to show them to you today. So, this is one of those Esterbrook pens. This one has the Esterbrook uh, going along the clip, like that, in horizontal way. And it is a simple black pen with a band, and the band turns loosely. And then it has Esterbrook. I'm not sure if I can show it to you with this lighting. It says there, Esterbrook. But I don't know anything about it, as I told you. It uncaps. The nib I have here is this one. And I don't really know about the nib variation. I know they have very... Uh, a very large range of nibs that you just could buy and screw in place and change them. I don't know anything about them. And this is kind of a, a aerometric feeling. I think the sec is not 100% okay, but I think it will be maybe able to feel. If you do this, it is a little... I think it takes a little too much time to come back to its original uh, shape. But I think I may risk to fill this pen and try to use it. But before of that, I will need to clean it and to just give it a, a light uh, polish because it's a little bit dull and ugly. I have to... I never cleaned the pen. I bought it and it stayed there just because... Because, because I have too many pens. The other Esterbrook that I have is this one that has the engraving also running on the side in Esterbrook in this ribbed uh, clip. And I think this design makes a lot of sense because it has the ribbed clip that matches the cap ring and goes almost the same thing to the lever with a ridge on the middle. It has a double jewel with rings on top and bottom, so if you ask me, this pen is looks much nicer than this one. So I don't really know about the model name. It has the same kind of engraving, the Esterbrook there, made in USA. It has a nib that seems to be very, very... Focus, please. Very, very fine, and it seems to have no tipping. But it is an interesting one, and it is a lever filler. And I was thinking, okay, I may need to replace the sack, but I decided to do that and I can feel air coming out of the section. So it means that is the, the sack is still working. So I may risk to ink it because I'm crazy enough and because I'm staying mostly at home. If I had to go to work, I don't, I don't think I would risk to fill up a pen that... I don't know how the sack will perform, if it will break or not, and fill everything with ink. When I'm home, it is more controlled, I can keep track of things and I will not ruin everything with ink. So, these are my two Esterbrooks. If you know the name of the models or variations, please let me know, because I would like to know the differences and how they are called, and maybe some time... Uh, indication about them. Please, if you know, let me know. One is a lever filler, the other one is a aerometric filling system. And now, let's go for the last topics. I have two last topics, so let me put here Esterbrook pens, which are them. I'm just writing here because it's easier for me to remember all these all these topics and then to transcribe them to the description and even to have the timestamps and to know what I talked about, what I asked you and to have you to reply easily on the questions that I make. So, let's go for the 
another pen topic, and this is uh, an interesting one that came to me after I received, I don't have it anymore, I already sent it back, it was uh, on loan for review from Apple Boom, the Parker 51, the 2021 release of the Parker 51. And the question, because it had a screw cap instead of a slip fit cap that was the usual thing, is which capping mechanism do you prefer? And now I see that I missed one pen here, I guess, but I will have a replacement. Okay, no problem. So, um, which, how do you prefer your pens to be kept? And this is something that I have to, to ask because there was a lot of debate about the Parker 51. Do you prefer pens with a screw cap like this? These pens have uh, an advantage because when you screw a cap, you really know that the cap is secure in a way. However, when you have the pen in your pocket, it can and cap itself. Sometimes it happens. So, this is the Parker Centennial Do Fold Big Red. I will leave links on all these pens below, but this is one of them. Will this... Uh, th does this work for you? Uh, do you prefer pens like this with screwing caps? I like the kind of the ritual of uncapping and capping the pen and feeling the threads. I think it's kind of a pleasant thing to do, but I know it's not for everyone. On the Parker 51 it had lots of criticism and I understand that also. Or do you prefer pens that will be more similar to a Parker for uh, 61 or Parker 45 or something like that, which is just a slip fit cap, like this one. You just do this it makes a click, but uh, it, it, it is not really secured by the click, it's secured and the click is mostly because this part hits the... Let me show you. It has this ridge here, but the pen doesn't close here with this ridge. It closes normally, but when you press it down, it will hit the... the cap will hit this and it will make the noise, but that's, it's not a click in place, it's just a slip fit cap like this when you post it, it stays there. So, is this your perfect uh, way of capping a pen? Just a slip fit? You can have the Parker 45 or the Parker 61 as an example, or even this Aurora 95. It closes just like this. Some people, I understand, are now very afraid of that because they are afraid the cap might get loose and they lose the pen. I never had a problem with a slip fit cap, so I don't think that will be really a problem. I think these pens are really nice. If they are well made, they will keep it. If You see, if I keep my fingers here, they will not hit that part and they will not make the noise. So, as I was told, I was telling you it's not a click in place, it's just a slip fit cap. About the click in place, we, ha we can say we have two, kind of, two kinds of click in place. We have like this the Lamy 2000, which clicks in place because it has these little two, these two little protrusions there that click in the cap like this. And now when you click the cap in place, you know the cap is um, closed. And I think some people need this to be reassured that the pen is really closed and to have that security feeling that, okay, there will be no accident. But it's just like this, it's not screwed in place. You have another system which is like the Lamy uh, safari that has this ridge there and it clicks in place there. So you here you can easily know it's clicking in place. I would say that this pen is more like a, a transition between the slip fit and the click in place. However, in this case, 
I always think about the risk of that or the inside of the cap getting too used up, too worn and too, too loose and then you can lose the cap so, uh, or lose the pen. So is that a problem for you? I tend to think this is the least durable way of capping a pen. But I really would like to know your opinions. There are, there, there are still two more versions that I can remember of. One of them is the bayonet capping system. And for that example, I have here this pen that it is amazing. This is my Visconti Homo sapiens bronze age oversize. It is that vacuum filler pen, very nice, made with the lava resin. And you can see it has this bayonet filling system and it fills and it closes like this. And it's kind of a screw cap, but you don't really have to screw it. You just do this and it is closed. So it is also a nice... Uh, interesting way of using your pens. There is um, another variation of the slip fit cap, which are the, that I didn't talk about, and I remember now that I talked about Visconti, and Visconti has some, uh, is the pens that have a magnetic closing system. You fit the cap just by sliding it, and then you have a magnet that keeps them shut. So I would say it is more like a, a, an extra safety level from the just slip fit cap. And if you don't trust any of these capping mechanisms, you can also, also rely on pens that don't have a cap at all. And so I'm remembering of these. This is a Parker 45 a desk set pen and it stays on the desk set. However, you can feel, you can consider that that little cup where the pen is, rests, is a cap. Just put in upside down way, but it is a cap for the pen. So maybe it is a slip fit cap or it is a no cap pen. But when you think about a no cap pen, you can go for the retractable nib pens and you have several like the Lamy Dialogue, the Pilot Capless, the Platinum Curidas, so you have some choice about them and they don't have a cap because they don't need it, they just have a retractable nib. So what do you think about this? Which capping mechanism do you prefer or is that any other capping mechanism that I don't uh, remember of right now? And for the last topic of today is what do you do with empty ink bottles? As I told you, I just emptied the Mont Blanc Daniel Defoe, which is this kind of ink bottle. It is now empty, so what do you do when you have a bottle like this? I have also a Parker Queen Black. I think I have some more around, but three is enough just to show them to you. And also a Waterman. It has some st still ink residue. I didn't clean it, but I have all these three at least these three empty bottles of ink. What do you do with them? So this is a question that I genuinely genuinely would like to know. Um, do you pick them and say, okay, I will not keep any more stuff at home and I will just uh, send them to the recycle bin? And if you ask me, that's kind of I want to do with I think I will give this away f uh, to a friend, but um, that's what I think about this Mont Blanc. It's not the most useful shape of a, of a bottle, so I don't think I, I have any use for, for it. 
these Parker bottles are larger. Sometimes I use them to store some rubber bands, uh, paper clips and that small stationary accessories because it is quite good for that. It has a large opening. Sometimes it's good. And you have also these Waterman, which are not bad at all because they can, if you have, maybe imagine a bottle like this, that it's not that good to fill the pans because you can't reach the end of the bottle. You can have these Waterman that you can even put, you see, this is the upright position and you can do this. If you tilt it, you can get the drops there on the on this facet, so it's very good. So this you can transfer ink from some bottles into this one if these are better. And in that sense, I have to say the Montblanc, the traditional ones with the shoe shape, they are great because they are really good to fill up your pens uh, from them. So uh, I had several, I have one or two, I had one or two that were empty and when I have a Montblanc bottle that is empty, I always transfer ink from some other bottle to them because they are very easy to fill your pens from. So that's a good use for them. So I just wanted to know what do you do with your empty ink bottles? Do you have any other ideas? Do you use them as uh, like flower vases or something like that? I, I would like to know that. And it is even more interesting to know that because there are some stores that sell, that make stores that sell ink samples and so they empty ink bottles into the ink samples to sell the ink samples. They sometimes sell empty ink bottles. So that means there may be a market for it. So what do you do? Or just, or you just use them for decoration on your shelf? It's, I believe it would be fun. And these ones that have this little remain of ink that's not really, really, really usable anymore. I, if you ask me if I would like to keep this ink, I would remove the label, I would fill it with water, mix it and have it these, with this, this stained water inside just for decoration purposes on a shelf. But when you have too many stuff at home, what do you do with your ink bottles? So if you have any ideas, suggestions, whatever, please let me know because I would be interested to have that information. So. These are my Friday Night Pen Thoughts, very long video, lots of thoughts, because last week's video was not made. I hope this was not too long and you found it interesting. I hope you enjoyed it. I always enjoy to make these videos. This is my favorite uh, type of video, so I have to thank you for watching with my most recent pen, the gorgeous Santini Libra Olive. So, this is all I had to show you, and I'll see you next video. Bye!